All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations, as always, to the elect. Great Millstone Dallas back with another class. Again, we're here to uplift the name of the Most High God, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who Hebrew name means He is, Yah, He is, uh, Hawa. All right, uh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, His name means He, Yah, all right, Hawa Shai, salvation or Savior, our mediator, our high priest, and our way back to the Father in these last days via the Rechakwadash Holy Spirit. Back again with another class today, uh, we wanted to uh, deal with a particular doctrine that has uh, been in Israel. You know, even the Apostle Tahar said that goes back to when he first started learning he was an Israelite. So this goes back to the 80s and even beyond uh, dealing with the so-called white race, the man who rules this current beast system, being the seed of Japheth. You know, and there's particular angles uh, particular people go. And for years... People have uh, said this, you know, a lot of people have uh, made this claim, you know, but prophetically they've never been able, to, been able to back it up. They go to some history and they go to DNA and this and that. And um, like the uh, elder Yatazak says, they run out of precepts. But uh, here recently uh, with this guy, Ronald Dalton and others, he's not the only one. He teaches that doctrine. Um, that the so-called white man is Jaffet. But now they've uh, opened another can of worms with the proclamation that America is Babylon the Great. <coughs> okay, so if you believe that America is Babylon the Great, which is true, all right, and you also teach that the so-called white man who rules Babylon the Great is Jaffet, then that's a great deal of confusion and it's off. So that's what we're going to deal with, uh, Lord willing, disprove, as the scriptures say. We're here to cast down imaginations and strongholds and things that exalt themselves up against the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. Because if we're at the end of this age, if we're getting ready to get the kingdom, according to the Holy Scriptures, what nation of people will be in rulership before we got that kingdom? All right. That's why we're going to go to Second Edra 6 and then we'll start at 7. Did anybody have anything? I find it interesting that the word that the name Japheth is only mentioned in the scriptures. Twelve. Twelve times. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, yep. but he, that's Esau. Like, right. On, man. He's not even again, as I always say, when you get Psalms, the 83rd chapter, when it speaks of the nations that are, you know, in cahoots to cut off the name of Israel. It's not one Japhetic nation mentioned, but then you have Esau and Amalek mentioned. OK. And who within this captivity has been a thorn in our side more than any other nation? The so-called white man. All right. And and when we go into the scriptures, we don't find a long war between the Japhetic people and the Israelites. OK, again, the uh, the Medes who ruled alongside with the Persians, uh, they were Japhetic. All right. But pretty much outside of that and even within that captivity, it wasn't as brutal as the, the, the captivity under these Edomites. OK, but anyway, let's uh, go ahead and. Uh, Get second edge of six and seven, and then whatever precepts that flow, you know, ultimately, hopefully, you brothers and sisters are edified. Go ahead. Second edge chapter six, uh, verse seven. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Mm -hmm. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow it? We, we constantly hear about this kingdom, um, the kingdom of heaven. We always talk about the kingdom. And as we should be asking, you know, Ezra was asking back then, all right, so when are you going to get rid of the heathen ruling? He complained about this in various uh, scriptures, even uh, early, uh, later on in this chapter, I believe. He's like, you made the world for our sakes, but why don't we possess an inheritance? Like, dang, when, when, how long? When is this, when are we going to get the kingdom? Well, that's what he's asking right here. When shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Go ahead. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Mm -hmm. For Esau is the end of the world. That's right. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. So Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. 
So the kingdom of heaven won't come. Somebody get the book of Obadiah, uh, verse 21. The kingdom of heaven won't come lest Esau falls. Okay, so the kingdom of heaven is synonymous with Esau's fall. The Edomites falling leads to the kingdom of heaven. Now, how can that be identified in the Bible? Yeah, it says Esau, but there's a particular kingdom prophetically that we also know has to fall. Okay, let's get Obadiah first and then somebody get Revelation. Obadiah 1 and 21? Yep. Obadiah 1 and 21, it reads, And Savior shall come up upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. And this is dealing with salvation. Okay? And Savior shall come up. Okay? Go ahead. And the kingdom shall be the Lord. So the kingdom will be the Lord's after the Mount of Esau is judged. The mountains or the Mount of Esau represents a government or a power structure. And prophetically, that can be identified as the beast system. Okay, the beast system that would have rulership in the earth. All right, in end time prophecy. All right, and, and what we'll show you is that rulership would be the revival of Rome. That is the revival of Rome because who ran the ancient Roman Empire as concerned in the Western Roman Empire? The Edomites. And when you go into history... It ties Edom with Rome. So the revival of that Roman Empire will be the revival of Rome's power. And that's what secretly one runs this world. Even this uh, great R-E-S-E-T, which is childish, we even have to say that. It's tied to a, uh, a, a, a group called the Club of Rome. OK, the Club of Rome and their ideologies is really, you know, going back to dealing with the Malthusianism and. You know, the green agenda that all goes back to the club of Rome. So it's, it's uh, the, the club. Rome really rules this current world. OK. And it's openly when you look at the infrastructure. But when you look at the even the names of different secret organizations, it's all tied to Rome. You got something? Uh, this is the book of Daniel, chapter seven, verse 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions and behold. One like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven. Now, what did the, 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 the now when you read up? Okay, as a matter of fact, you, yeah, you have to start up. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, this is Daniel chapter 7. Now, when, when you deal with Daniel, the seventh chapter, uh, this is dealing with uh, the world empires that would be in rulership up into the kingdom. Like you literally be able to identify and track the captivity of the Israelites via this chapter. So the Israelites will go into these various captivities. It starts with the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. Then it goes to the uh, the uh, Persians, the, the Medio Persian Empire, and then you have the Greeks, and you have the fourth beast, which is the Romans. But Daniel gives you uh, the understanding of the little horn, which is the revival of Rome. Now these aren't just beasts; nations of people run these beasts. All right, and what we're telling you is that Japhet, they ran the Medes, okay, but they didn't have anything to do with that fourth beast. All right. I'm going to start a verse. I'm going to read verse 8 and verse 9, and I'm going to jump back. Mm -hmm. Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. That little horn is Babylon the Great, the revival of Rome. This is dealing with the fourth beast. And all, even the scholars, so called scholars, know that the fourth beast is Rome. But the, the, in prophecy, that fourth beast, okay, would, would, would raise up. Somebody get Malachi real quick, too. Yep, the, the, yeah, read that, Baba Kasha, real quick. Uh, Malachi 1 and 2, it says, I have loved you, said the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord? Mm -hmm. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Edom says we are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places. Now, there's many times historically that Edom, you know, kind of fell and was in the desolate state, all right? But the more notable one is at the time of what? the uh, When the Western Roman Empire fell. The, yep, and, and, and they rebuilt. So look up that word, rebuild. Read that again and then get look up that word, rebuild. I'm in Malachi 1 and 4 for anybody Okay, I'll look Whereas it up. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will go down. Right. So I have that word return. 
And then somebody look up the word renaissance. This is that word return in the uh, Hebrew, shawab, to return, to turn back, to return, to go back, human relations, spiritual relations, to uh, repetition, let's see here, to restore, refresh, all right? And what we're, what we're telling you is that uh, when you go into history, when the Roman Empire fell, which we can get some history that ties Edom to Rome. The rebuilding of that, starting with the, re the Renaissance, that's the Edomites. That was the Edomite power structure being born back into the earth. And that's what this is talking about in the book of Malachi. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Huh. Back in the book of Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Right, and he's going to throw down via what? What he does to Babylon the Great. And that word return also means to bring back, to refresh, to restore. And ancient Rome was restored into the earth, all right, via the Renaissance period, which means rebirth, that led all the way up to what we're living in now, which is America, NATO, and the EU. That's the Roman Empire restored in the planet Earth, and it rules the earth. And it's not ran by Japhetic people. That's what we're going to show you. But go ahead, some more. And they shall call them the border of wickedness mm -hmm. and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Right. There you go. All right. So going back. I got that word renaissance too. You can read that word renaissance. It's in the Britannica here. It says uh, in the French, we birth period in European, civiliz in European civilization immediately following the Middle Ages. And conventionally held to have been characterized by a surge of interest in classical scholarship and values. Mm -hmm. So, like you were saying, the return to the classics right. last night. Right. You know, right. Roman architecture. Right. You know, history and stuff right. like that. Culture. Right. That's what the, the scriptures talks about the image of the beast. What beast? Rome. The image of the beast is living through this very system. And what we're going to show you today is that that beast system is ran by the Edomites prophetically. Japheth has nothing to do with it. Now, where were we? Daniel 7. Yeah, we can get that, get that, and then we'll get Revelation 18. All right. This is Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. It says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. The Spanish, the French, and the British had to fall, and out of the British came Babylon the Great, okay, America, which has led to this. And that is an extension of the Renaissance. Britain itself, the Spanish itself, the French itself, all of that is an extension of the Renaissance. That's all of those top scientists. They were just forward in Edomite thought process. That's all they were doing. The pseudoscience that rules the earth today goes back to the ancient Roman Empire. Yeah. The, Greeks too. the Greeks too. Yep, because the Greeks were Edomites. This is, you know, we talk about how this is the Roman Empire rebirth. And it also, it's the, 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 it's the Greco-Roman Empire rebirth. Because there's remnants of Greek culture within this system we live in today as well. All right. It's just that Rome was where they got the height of their power in most of their territory. Yep. You see? And we have records of their legislation that was passed in order to uh, pull up their thought, mm -hmm. uh, i.e. Uh, Hellenization. Hellenization, right. right. And that's what they're trying to do all over again with this uh, NWO. They're trying to establish their name their image in the earth above Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, nowhere in the scriptures can you find that Japheth would do these things. Right. It's always Esau. Okay, and there's nowhere he can go at this point. And with this argument that Japheth is the so called white man, now you openly declaring that Babylon is America, you've threw a wild hook, all right, on a very good technical boxer. And you're going to get countered. You can't come throwing that shit when you get in the ring with men who understand the Bible. It doesn't make sense. So now we, you know, we smiling. And, hey, we're going to capitalize off of your mistake. So let's get, uh, keep going. Kind of says. If you want to, you think, it, you think it's your hit right now? Yep, yeah, go ahead. Okay, kind of says. It says, and behold. And this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, mm -hmm. and a mouth speaking great things. And that's basically they parade themselves as if they're God, but they're mere mortals. They're men. Mm -hmm. You know, they're science. They're, you know, what they boast in. You know, they act as if they're the most high. 
and they speak great things against the Most High. That's and we see that now. When you look at this NWO, what is it based upon? High level pride and rebellion against the Most High, saying that we are going to uh, dominate the Heavenly Father's creation through artificial intelligence, which is artificial wisdom. Right, synthetic. Yeah, he's that's that mouth speaking great things. We're living in this prophecy right now. Go ahead. Right, verse 9, it says, I'll be held till the thrones were cast down. Right, so this shows you that before the Lord returns, this is going to be the system ruling. Right. And it's the revival of Rome. When the thrones are cast down, Rome will be ruling. That's why somebody get Isaiah 63. Rome will be ruling, Esau will be ruling when Yahweh Shai return. Okay, not Japheth. Japheth will be somewhere chilling. So, uh, 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 healing up from the beatdown the Edomites gave them <laughs> when they colonized their ass. Japheth is nowhere to be found. Japheth is quiet in prophecy. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I want to get that word cast down real quick. That mm -hmm. word cast down in the Hebrew is uh, Ramah. And uh, that word cast down here says we're placed or the, uh, set mm -hmm. uh, to be cast or to, to throw, but to pr pretty much be uh, to be set. Right, and the thrones represents the rulership of the heathen. And again, we just read Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So we're reading here, and you link all of these things, Esau would have to rule this root, this beast system we're reading about that would be intact before the Lord set judgment. Go ahead. It says, I beheld to the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So the Lord makes his decision while Esau's ruling. Okay, go ahead. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. That's he's going to send them, them chariots, all right, are going to go before him and he's going to send his only begotten son back. That's what this is uh, uh, showing. Go ahead. Yep, I'm going to jump down to verse 13. Mm -hmm. It says, I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven mm -hmm. and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. So that kingdom comes through who? Esau fallen. Right. So here it is. You got a guy like Ronald Dalton saying, well, Babylon the great is America. We're getting ready to get the kingdom. But then he wants to link the people ruling this kingdom to Japheth. That's making sense. It doesn't make sense. Last leg of the Roman Empire. The, the, the last leg of the Roman Empire will be ran by Esau. Exactly. Again, Esau is the end of the world. And I believe he believes in the Apocrypha. Okay? Go ahead. Oh, it says, and languages, excuse me, it says, uh, his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom that and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Right. And read in Obadiah verse 21 again. It says, and Savior shall come up to judge the mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. So again, the kingdom, if we're getting ready to get the kingdom, Japheth ain't ruling. Right. Esau would have to be ruling. Esau gotta be judged. This is why Esau is comfortable with that documentary being put out there. Mm -hmm. You see? Because let's say we had a documentary on everything we're talking about right now. Esau would, would sweep that under the rug if a, a nigga like uh, Anthony Davis retweeted it. Yeah. He would, you, it wouldn't be a big deal. He would, he would sweep that under the rug. Mm -hmm. Okay? They, because it, it, it doesn't, that documentary that Dalton did, though it has some truth and it's good, people are talking, it, 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 it's a lot of confusion within that. Because what he's teaching is that the so-called white people are Esau, but then... The Ish people with the small hats, they're a mixture of uh, Esau and the seed of Horites. So the Horites who are Hamites and the Edomites mixed and created a new seed, and that's the Ish people. Which, uh, that, that's, that doesn't make any sense. You can't mix a seed anyway. But anyway, yeah, you are what your father is, and prophetically the nation of Edom would be here in the earth. Okay, and the, 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 the Ish people are of the seed of Edom. They're just another tribe of Edom. Just like you got 12 tribes of uh, uh, Israel, you have particular tribes of Esau. Yep, the Dukes of Edom. All right? Go ahead. Now, where we at? Uh, you... I had this because if if Rome is going to come back and rule again, the question is who ruled Rome? And this simple, 
It's a simple Google search. You read here in uh, Matthew 2 and 1, it says, Now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Who is Herod? You know, you look up Herod. And I'm just, you know, just type in Herod. I'm at AmazingBibleTimeline.com, and you can find this in many places. Herod the Great, an Edomite rules. Palestine is the name of the article. It says, Herod the Great was born in the land of Idumea, or Edom, <laughs> mm -hmm. around 74 B.C., which is about when he appears in the Bible timeline chart. He was the son of Antipater of Idumea, uh, of Idumea, of Idumea who was high-ranking, who was a high-ranking uh, official for Hyrcanus II. Mm -hmm. Herod was an Edomite mm -hmm. that had adopted the customs of the Jews. You know? Right, because John Hycranus, which was of the Hasmonean dynasty, Boom. for political reasons, he forced all yep. of those Edomites and other nations that were around to become Jews. Mm -hmm. Because in, in, in order to fight in the military and pay taxes, you would have to be a Jew. So he was like, all of y'all, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was the beginning of the, 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 the so-called white man calling himself uh, a Jew. But then there became, there was a Roman emperor who eventually, as they mingled and wiggled around, gave uh, the Herodian dynasty dominion over Judea. Mm -hmm. Okay? Pompey, right, yep, Pompey. And then what did they do? Uh, the Herod declared himself king of the Jews, but he was an Edomite, mm -hmm. which goes back to an age-old war that started in the womb of Rebekah. Really, it goes back to the garden. It goes back to the seed of Cain versus the sons of God. But when there were twins in her womb, all right, and Jacob got the blessing eventually, and Esau was mad. So historically and biblically, there's always going to be friction, and prophecy-wise, there's always going to be friction between these two people. These two nations of people are going to always be at odds, and Esau has always wanted that birthright. Why do you think he was there at the time of the uh, when the Persians were ruling? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> what led to Purim? All right, he was there trying to get Jake destroyed. Mm -hmm. He's always tried to destroy us. Okay? You got something else? Yep. Just kind of just following up what you said. It says, um, Herod was an Edomite that had adopted the customs of the Jews. In the past, the Edomites were ancient enemies of the Jewish people, but they no longer were relevant as a people during this era as the, uh, many of the Edomites were absorbed into other cultures of the time. They had been doing that. Um, it says, uh, the Jews had conquered these people around 140 B.C. and forced many of them to accept their religion or to leave the region. Though many Jewish people didn't care for foreigners worshiping uh, God and adopting their customs, Herod was made governor of Judea when he was 25 years old. Arcanus II was king of Judea during this uh, era in history, and his throne was usurped by his nephew, Antagonist Herod right. lost his power as governor and he fled to Rome to appeal for help. The Roman Senate supported his cause and ended up making him the new Jewish king. And see, a lot of people get confused because one of them is calling themselves the Herodian, the other one calling themselves Romans, mm -hmm. one calling themselves Greeks, some were still calling themselves Idumeans. They're all Edomites, They're even all unto Edomites. this day. Ain't they calling them? They fighting right now, Ukraine, yeah. Russia, it's all Edomites, yeah, man. Yeah. French, they're all Edomites, man. But the original inhabitants of these lands, the Greeks and the Romans, were Japhetic. Right. You, too, you see? Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, some. No, I was, I was just saying. Okay. Um, it says, the Roman Senate supported his cause and ended up making him the new Jewish king. Herod went back to uh, Judah in 39 BC and married Antagonus' niece. So that he could uh, have some legitimacy to the throne and the Jewish people. So he married a Jake woman. Yep. That's crazy, man. It's crazy you see the same thing going on now because the Orthodox uh, Jews say that the bloodline comes from the mother. Mm -hmm. That was a way for them to, mm -hmm. to, to gain power. And also with them Judaizing people, you see the same thing with the situation that happened in East Africa, mm -hmm. Ethiopia, the conflict. Mm -hmm. And they, they allow a lot of them to get in and say, well, okay, you guys are the tribe of Dan. Yeah. Yeah. You guys. Right. It's the same concept. Same concept, right. Right. 
Boom. Uh, it says Herod went back to uh, uh, to Judah in 39 BC and married Tacitus' niece so that he could have some legitimacy to the throne and the Jewish people. He had to end up banishing his wife Doris and their son to pull this off. In 36 BC, Herod defeated Antagonus and was finally able to claim the throne. Mm. So, right, and you read there's different Herods. You know, you right. Herod at the time of Yahweh Shai was the diff, different than the Herod who had John the Baptist's head cut off. Mm -hmm. And then you keep going, you have Herod Agrippa, when mm -hmm. Paul was, you know, being accused of the Jews. Mm -hmm. That Agrippa, he was of that line too. He was of that lineage. All Edomites. All Edomites. Now, when you get Revelation, the 12th chapter, um, somebody get that real quick. Because what, what did Herod do? What is, what is, what's the notable act he did? He was, uh, he was trying to kill Yahushua. There you go. He was trying to kill Yahushua. Now watch what prophecy does here in Re Revelation 12. Go ahead. Start verse 1. Uh, or, just jump down to verse 3. Start at uh, 3. Yep. Right. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 3, it says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Now who's red tied to in the Bible? Esau. 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 Right? So what would this red dragon do? It says, having seven heads and, and ten crowns, and right. seven crowns upon his head. Mm -hmm. And his tail drew the third part of, of the stars of heaven. Now, who's the third part of the stars of heaven for the, any of the newer brothers? Southern kingdom. Southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They stayed and remained in the land of, uh, you know, Jerusalem, you know, which they called Judea eventually. Go ahead. Right. It says, and, he, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Mm-hmm. What does cast to the earth mean? He put they were in a low estate. Mm -hmm. They were in captivity pretty much. They were vassals to the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is why you have various sellouts trying to fight. Like, hell no, nah, we ain't for to be under the rule of these devils. You know, but that was that was, the fourth beast had to rule. Go ahead. Right. It says, And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. There you go. The dragon. The dragon. It's tied to this, the same dragon that's speaking of in Revelation 13, and it says the red dragon. These are Edomites, mm -hmm. yep. okay? And this is ultimately the seed of the serpent <clears throat> against the seed of the woman all over again. That, oh, that, that particular uh, theme is all throughout the scriptures. Yep. Now, some more on that? Uh, I just find it interesting how pretty much Egypt did the same thing, too, mm -hmm. and how Paul links Pharaoh to Esau right. in Romans, the ninth chapter, right. you know? Jaffa don't fit nowhere in there. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, uh, and one of the other reasons is that they say Jaffa is the so-called white man. Somebody look up the term Ashkenazi uh, Jew. Now, in the scriptures, Jaffa has sons. Get this point real quick. Somebody get the book of Genesis uh, 10. Genesis 10, verse 13. Where it goes into the sons of Jaffa. Genesis... Genesis 10 and uh, start at 2. Genesis 10 and 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai. Right. And Javon. And uh, again, Tumar. these are Japhetic lands. Even when we go to Ezekiel 38, who does it say? Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. All right. But who is in that land actively doing these deeds? And this time it's the Edomites. All right. But go ahead. It says, and Javon and Tubal and Meshach. And Tiras, and, yeah, first beauty song. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, because you just mentioned Ashkenaz, them. right. Ashkenaz is one of them. That's one of the sons of Japheth, right? Mm -hmm. Now, today you have a group of people calling themselves Ashkenazi Jew. Now, my question is, are they claiming to be the seed of Japheth? No. 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 Why do they call themselves Ashkenazi Jew? Because they are saying we are Jews and our fathers were in this land. They, they're, they're calling this land by its ancient name, which they say Germany. But when you look it up, it's like French, you know, the area of Turkey. But read, some, read about Ashkenazi. Right. I just went to Wikipedia to make it simple. Ashkenazi Jews, um, also known as Ashkenetic Jews or Ashkenazism, or a Jewish diaspora population who coalesced in the uh, Holy Roman Empire around the end of the first millennium. Um, their traditional diaspora language is Yiddish, okay? Which is a mixture of German and 
a know, bunch of other stuff. It says you know? a, a West Germanic language with uh, Jewish linguistic elements, including the Hebrew alphabet, mm -hmm. which uh, developed during the uh, Middle Ages after they moved from Germany and France into Northern Europe right eastern uh europe right so they're not proclaiming to be the seed of japheth they're saying we're of the seed of jacob actually yeah. but our fathers stem from the land of ashkenaz that's all they're saying yeah and they were the ones that were funding a lot of the hate that that came against the scottish they was the ones who who funded a lot of, of taking down uh, charles the first after king james had went down and stuff like that they was all up in there and so they was always uh creating political rifts everywhere throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so they're tied to the... Like scattered fire? Yeah, fire scattered. Scattered. Mm -hmm. fire scattered. Yep. Yeah, and if I may, we even have that concept in the scriptures in numerous times where there's particular people that live in a land and they might call themselves after that land because of that land. Case right. in point, Adanara, you know, Abraham and, you know, their forefather. Not, you know, they was in that region. And when you read about it in the scriptures... They'll be called Syrian. Syrian, right. But they weren't up the line of Iran, but the reason why is because of that landmass that they was located at. Right, right. So they're not claiming, because Ashkenazi Jew doesn't make sense. How could you be uh, Japhetic Shemitic? Right, exactly. It doesn't make sense. So just because they call themselves the Ashkenazi Jews does not mean that they're the seed of Japheth. Nor are they even claiming to be the seed of Japheth. Yeah, that's right. a heavy point. It crosses each other out. Ashkenazi <laughs> yeah. They're trying to do the same thing now. Yeah. Uh, with, the, with, with the concept of what the uh, the Jews or uh, what Jews and Horites also was the uh, or Jeff Defetic and Horite or something like that. Who that? Well, Ronald Dalton says yeah. that the Ish people are actually a mixture between the Horites and the ja did he say? Yeah. Esau and Horites. Esau yeah. and the Horites he's, mixed he's, 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 and made a new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting that because Tim, the uh, the wife of Eliphaz, was a Horite. Yeah, and that's why he's that's why he's saying that. But it doesn't go back to the line of the woman at the end of the day. It's the line of the of the father, which yeah. the Ifaz was the Edomite. Right. <laughs> so that Ashkenazi Jew point is 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 obsolete. I mean, we could get deeper into it, but the they're not claiming to be of the seed of Japheth. Mm -hmm. They they're claiming to be of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which they're the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. They're not claiming to be the seed of Japheth. That's not their claim. They're just saying they're calling Ashkenaz by its ancient landmass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In the, in the rabbinical term Ashkenazi refers to diaspora Jews, <laughs> diaspora Jews who who estimate who established communities along the Rhine in western Germany mm -hmm. and northern France during the Middle Ages. Upon their arrival, they adapted traditions carried over from the Holy Land, Babylonia, and the Western Mediterranean mm -hmm. to their new European environment. There you go. And remember, we just read John Hycranus at that time, Edomites started calling themselves Jews. The family line of Herod called themselves the Jews. Yep. And that's why John the Baptist was cursing Herod out. The same thing we're doing is what John did. Mm -hmm. If you call yourself this, the, the, if you a Jew, then why are you committing uh, sin? It's basically the same thing we're saying. Go ahead. In the late Middle Ages, due to widespread persecution, the majority of the Ashkenazi population steadily shifted eastward, moving out of the Holy Roman Empire into the areas that later became part of the uh, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Now, now, this is where you start to study the Crusades mm -hmm. and the wars of the Crusades. And it was all about the, this uh, Christian, Jewish, Muslim <laughs> battles that were happening throughout all the lands and then you get the stories of the Templars and them protecting so-called Jewish people and all that type of stuff. Okay? Uh, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. These uh, areas today comprise parts of present-day uh, Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Poland, Russia, Slovakia, and Ukraine. Over the course of the late 18th and 19th century, those Jews who remained in or returned to historical German land generated a cultural reorientation under the influence of the uh, ha I can never say this word Haskai, Haskai and the struggle for emancipation as well as the intellectual and cultural ferment in urban centuries. 
They gradually abandoned the use of Yiddish and adopted German while developing new forms of Jewish religious, religious life and cultural identity. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of history that goes into them marrying in, getting political power, begging, you know. Right. <laughs> The, the victim and the, what, how you say it? The victim and the villain. The victim and the villain. You know? Right, right. And eventually that, that group of people, you know, they're linked to the Khazars too. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of history, which we ain't going to go into all of it. Because really, to, to, to seal the deal on this topic is to follow prophecy. That's it. More than anything. Because again, the Edomites are linked to Babylon the Great. Again, we read Esau is the end of the world. And when we get Revelation 18, somebody else got a point real quick? Uh, I had read. something from this yep, book. Yep. yep, get that too. Yep, yep. I'll read this. This is uh this is from Arthur Kosler, uh, the Thirteenth Tribe, and uh, I'm gonna read a part from page two twenty eight, going into two twenty nine. Um, it says, uh, for the sake of pequantry, it should be mentioned that the Ashkenaz of the Bible refers to a people living somewhere in the vicinity of Mount Ararat in Ar uh, Armenia. Now, what is Ararat? Turkey. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. The name occurs in Genesis 10 and 3 and 1 Chronicles 1 and 6 as one of the sons of Gomer, who was a son of Japheth. Mm -hmm. Ashkenaz is also a brother of to Togarma and a nephew of Mog uh, Magog, whom the Khazars, according to King Joseph, claimed as their ancestor. And this is why one who is spiritually discerned must break down the Bible. Right. Because you see these names and you just automatically think it's talking about the, the, the you know, you have to understand how to discern. Mm -hmm. And people see that in uh, Ezekiel 38, Gog, Magog, and, the, and they think it's automatically talking about the seed of Japheth. No, it's the Edomites. The scriptures talks about how they would uh, uh, take lands from particular nations, oppress a man in his heritage. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Worldwide, they've done this. The Edomites, go ahead. So, and, an and another thing is like, if that's the case, if Ashkenaz, are they, if they're saying that those are the Jews, how come the, in prophecy it calls for Ashkenaz to team up with, with, with the Medes and destroy Babylon? There you go. Case? There you go. You know what I'm saying? It would, that, would, that would offset the whole, uh, the whole idea of them being the people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It says for Ashkenaz is also named in Jer oh, here it is that's the spirit for Ashkenaz is also named Jeremiah fifty one, where the prophet calls his people and their allies to rise and destroy Babylon to come up against Babylon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that. Um, I'm gonna jump down and read this last little part. Uh, you know, actually, no, that's 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 the point. That's it. That's it. All right. Now, um, anybody else got some? Got some? I was gonna say one verse two in Revelation eighteen. Just find a good spot. Let's find a good spot. Because when you get Revelation, the 18th chapter is dealing with the fall of Babylon. This is a power structure that will be ruling in the earth. Okay. And we can tie it to everything we've been reading. We read about the revival of the fourth beast uh, uh, in Daniel, the seventh chapter, which is the revival of Rome. All right. Go ahead. I just wanted to make a real quick point because mm -hmm. we were talking about basically how Esau has moved around, changed his name, he's marrying into families, he's mixing he, he, to, to get political gain, to create legitimacy of his bloodline. Mingling himself among the people. You know? And so when you go to Genesis, the 27th chapter, it talks about the blessing between Jacob and Esau, right? It. So you skip down, um, and I'm going to read quickly to get to the point. What verse you at? I'm at verse um, 30... Seven. And this is a very important okay. to, to the lesson, the water. <clears throat> Genesis 27 and 37 says, and, and Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, talking about Jacob. <clears throat> I, like it. I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given have I given to him for service. And you got to think Esau and Jacob were blessed with the fatness of the earth, meaning they would both have world rulerships. No other nation has promised a world rulership. But the difference between Jacob's is that the Lord told uh, Jacob, you're, you're going to be Lord over your brethren. <laughs> you know, so go ahead. And with corn and wine have I sustained him, sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me. 
even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live and, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Mm -hmm. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Now, in verse 40 it says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt have, uh, have dominion. Right? I always like to go into this word dominion. Right, so he, Isaac is promising Esau, you're going to rule the world at one point. Mm -hmm. but, but you're going to do it by the sword. Yep. You know? This word, you're going to rule the world, right? You're going to basically have the fatness of the earth. And you're going to have the dominion. When you look up that word dominion in the Hebrew, the word is uh, ra 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 right? And when you go to this word, it says to wander restlessly, mm. roam, right? To roam about. And so, it, 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 and you see, this is how Esau has been able to use the sword, get up into different nations, take resources, create wars, and then get the dominion. Neither keep it at home. They neither keep it at home. The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. Who does that? Who's doing that? That's Esau. The, you, the, the prophecies are identifying markers of who's who, right. what's what, where's where, and how's how. Esau is the so-called white man that's right. been using his sword, right. having the dominion by wandering into different lands, reestablishing borders, corrupting the people, and doing what he's got to do. Mm -hmm. And he's perpetually hated Jacob. He's perpetually hated you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Why? Because of the blessing. Because of the blessing. Okay. That's right. He made the vow to kill Jacob, but he didn't get to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the, 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 and the prophecy said that it was going to be two nations, two manner of people. Those are the stars of the show, man. That's it. Those are the stars of the show. Right. Yeah, you got yep. extras and people that walk by. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I would say 12 times in the scriptures versus all the precepts going in to eat and be in the end. Yep. Yeah. Come yeah. On, man. And it's like, okay, so when was this prophecy fulfilled? When did Esau get world rulership? <laughs> right now. <laughs> Man, look, Marlon, check this out, bro. It's a beast system. I'm down in the brown uh, driver bags lexicon in this, right? And this is Strong's uh, H7300. Uh, Rewag, uh, wander restlessly, roam, go to and fro, right? Run upon, invade, mm -hmm. attack. And that's what Cain would do. He was a, <laughs> he'd be a fugitive wandering. Yeah. Vagabond. Okay. Attacking everybody. Uh, figuratively, to corrupt. That's it. That's him, bro. So restless. Well, 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 in Revelation 20, when it talks about Satan being loosed out of his prison, which is the, the revival of Rome, the Renaissance, what did they do? They went throughout the four corners, spreading lies, lying to all the nations, which is going to lead to World War Three. Yeah. Satan ain't directly linked to Jaffe. S Satan is the, the link to Esau. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The, the the biblical Edomites, when you read, uh, you, you got some more? Uh, somebody get Second uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and 8. Oh, can I, can I one yep, yep. Uh, Revelation 13 and 11. Now they are another beast coming out, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns. Like a lamb, mm -hmm. and he spake as a dragon. Right, and this is speaking of America. When you go to, we read Daniel the seventh chapter. That little horn. This is that little horn. Mm -hmm. This is the revival of Rome, and through this system, that that charagma will be issued through this beast system. All right, go ahead. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. Who's the first beast? Rome. But remember the beast had a deadly wound but the deadly wound was healed mm -hmm. and america is the completion of that wound being healed along with nato and the eu they have world rulership through this system that rules now this is isaac's blessing to esau being played out we're living in it mm -hmm. and yahweh is going to return to take that very blessing away from him 
and set up Jacob's blessing. Japheth has nothing to do with that process. Oh, I say Japheth ain't even mentioned after, after First Chronicles. <laughs> right, right. So Esau's not threatened by that doctrine. This is why he, which is working against him anyway, but this is why he wants that documentary in the air. Well, he's not scared. Because really Esau, either he set the dude up or either Esau is just on the back foot and just trying to figure out what to do or how to do it or to try to demonize this truth. But ultimately, he's making a big mess. Right. And people, the, the elect are going to come to the truth either way. So the Lord knew them niggas just had a little star power, Kanye and Kyrie and this guy. And it just he's it's, used it's, it's helping our cause because the elect, everybody's talking, but the elect are the ones that's going to really get to the truth. man. Go ahead. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell they're in to worship the first beast. Right, the first beast. Now somebody type in Edom Rome. Just look up Edom Rome. We don't have to get too deep in it, but when you go into history, Esau or Edom is tied to Rome. So the first beast that this particular beast that's coming up out of the earth, the, the power he exercised and the authority he exercised is tied to Esau as well because it's ancient Rome being reborn into the earth. And how does America exercise the power of Rome? <laughs> You have a Senate, okay? You have Roman numerals, the the uh, const the um, what's that? The uh, Constitution or something is based upon ancient Roman law. Uh, uh, it's a bunch of everything. The the Colosseum, everything that we see today links us back to ancient Rome. The Capitol Line Hill, the Capitol Building. Yep, yep, yep. Whose deadly wound was healed? Damn! Read that again, Baba Kishan. Just read it through. I read it through. And he exercises all the power of the first beast, beast before him and causes the earth and them which draw their end to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Whose deadly wound was healed. You might have to go to DuckDuckGo to get better information. Well, I actually got a page. For okay. Oh, shit. Sure. My man, my man. Go ahead. They got a book they sell on Amazon. Yeah, I see. <laughs> the Roman he saw Edom Rome, Rome, the hidden yeah. identity of the man of sin. Right, now, right, right. This page, well, this book right here is called The Roman Empire, The Empire of the Edomites. Uh -huh. And this page right here is in, a, it's in the 10th page, and it really just quantifies everything that's been said so far. But um, it says, so long as the Israelites enjoyed a great and formidable empire in Canaan, but after that, the powerful republic of the 12 tribes had been destroyed by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. They wonderfully increased in numbers and in strength, extended their dominion to the west. And this is talking about Edom right here. All right. Subjugated Italy, founded Rome and the Roman Empire, and at length entirely overturned the Jewish state, which is what brothers went into how they infiltrated, you know, when they converted into uh, Judaism, well, you know, not Judaism, but our beliefs. Mm -hmm. When you continue, it says the second temple being destroyed by Titus Vespasian and professing the religion of, says Jesus Christ, which they were the first of all nations to embrace. They hold Jacob in captivity till the Messiah, then David, or Yahweh Shai shall appear. So, yeah, that's another thing. Prophetically, the final captivity of the Israelites, which we'll get to that in a minute, um, it will be by the Edomites. Go ahead. It says the rabbins further assert. And this book was made in, the, what, 1854, so this is a while ago. It says, the rabbins further assert that the prophecies of the prophets against Esau, Edom, and the cities of Edom have as yet received but a small accomplishment, hmm. which is going into, you know, back in Rome, and it's saying that's only a small piece of their fulfillment of uh, Genesis, the 27th chapter. It says, and have yet received but a small accomplishment, but that they will obtain their full fulfillment in the punishment and destruction of Rome Christian, they designate the eternal city impious Rome. They denominate their empire the impious kingdom or kingdom of impiety, and they believe that the son of David will not come until the impious kingdom shall have been extended over the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that's going into Rome being an impious kingdom. So what it's saying is pretty much Yahweh Shai is not going to come back <clears throat> until Esau's influence is spread throughout the whole known world. Which backs up Revelation 12, what we just went into, and Revelation 13. 13. Yep. You know, Salak so like had said Revelation 13. 13. And, and, and that's you know. why you have a lot of contemporary, even contemporary uh, uh, rabbis that call this place over here uh, uh, 
Atlanta Eagles. Atlanta Eagles, yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep. So they, they know that Esau is supposed to be ruled. Right. You have a war between a, a class of Edomites. You have the, uh, there's some Edomites who say that they're the uh, Jacob and then they call the Amalekites Esau, but they track they ass is great. Like they give good information. Yeah, like if you if you study like the British Israelites, yep, yep, yep. and if you go and start studying what they believe, they really track Esau and uh, big time. They did that you for know. us. Yep. <clears throat> you know, we yep. used to go through their, their information. <clears throat> it was like that. You know, they would track all the kings of Esau where they would get how they got in Turkey, became the Ottoman Turks, ruled the Ottoman Turks, became the Khazars and everything like that. So they tracked them very well. And these uh these Talmudists here that wrote that you know a lot of those yeah, Talmudist ra- rabbis, but basically they, they equate uh, Christianity at that time with because you got to remember over the course of time Christianity got infused with all types of idol worship. Mm-hmm. Modern Christianity is nothing but you know Egyptian, Babylonian, Persian, Greek and Roman idol worship. You know we're, right now we're in that season. That's right. Okay, and so they were like, "Man, this right, is just right. Rome. This, this is nothing but Edomite Rome." You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And so you know they were right about it. And then I'm like looking at an article right now that was that's basically saying, you know, uh, according to Jewish historians, Romulus, the founder of Rome, was of the line of Esau. Mm-hmm. You know the story of uh, Romulus and Remus, mm-hmm. the myth of how. Uh, Rome began or whatever, you know. To a soothsayer or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're saying basically it was two brothers, two Edomite brothers fighting over who was going to rule, you know. And so, yeah, man, they, they track and trace it for sure, for sure. I got right. a quick precept for you. Let's go check. This is Lamentation chapter 4, verse 22. It says, The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. Mm-hmm. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. And when you go into that word visit here, see, I just had to pull it up. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob. There you go. That's the same. That's Esau is the end of the world. The final captivity of the Israelites is that fourth beast, is Babylon a great, which we'll touch in in Revelation uh, the uh, 18th chapter real quick and get a few other precepts. But there you go. Boom. Right there it proves that the Edomites are the last people who would have us in captivity. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. When you go into that word visit in Lamentation 4 and 22, the word is um, quad in the Hebrew. And it says to pay attention to or to observe or to seek, just as what he just went into, how they carefully documented who Esau was and where he was going to be at. That's just an example of that precept right there. You know, the Lord to use certain particular people to be able to, I mean, we track him down through the spirit. But the Lord used particular people to actually track him down from where he is mm-hmm. to help point his ass out, you know. That's it on that precept. Right. Go ahead. Like just, uh, just to add to the priest, uh, the priest point there, he said that uh, that word visit goes into Pekad. Well, that also links it to Babylon in Jeremiah the 50th chapter. There you go. Mer- uh, Mer- uh, Merathion and Pekad. That's his visit. Yep. Visitation. So mm-hmm. heavy. That's yep. Heavy. Let's get that. Get that. Go yeah, ahead. we got to bring that out real quick. That's heavy. <laughs> And then we got that Second Thessalonians. Yeah. Then we'll get Jeremiah. We'll get a uh, Revelation. Get a few in Jeremiah, and then uh, we'll close it out. This is uh, Jeremiah fifty and twenty one. It says, "Go up against the land of Merathiah, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Pekah." Now Merathiah is. Uh, you said you had verse twenty one. Okay. Yep, Merathiah, um, which Mar or Marah goes into bitter. In America, America, Amargo, it means bitter. So pretty much Jeremiah is talking about America, literally. Yeah, Amargo is where you get, Mar is bitter, nightmare, Mar, bitter. Amargo uh, uh, is bitter, and right here, Marathiam, the the root of that word is going to be what? Mer, Mar, bitter. Okay, go ahead. God, it says, even against it. And against the inhabitants of Pekah, waste and utterly destroy after them, said the Lord, mm-hmm. and do according to all that I have commanded thee. There you go. And Marathiam is double rebellion. All right. And we know that this is this is that double rebellion. But when you go to the root word, bitterness, mar, bitterness. So America has that this particular. So the Jeremiah was 
specifically describing here. <laughs> because when we're reading Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, we have to understand that this was a letter. And we're going to get a scripture out of this chapter. This was a letter that Jeremiah wrote to the captives at Babylon to, uh, to assure them that they would be delivered. But when you read the letter, it ain't talking about getting out of ancient Babylon. It's talking about this. So that letter is really up to us right now. Okay? Now, let's go to... Uh, anybody got something else? I had a quick one. Go ahead. Uh, this is Psalm 137, verse 7. It says, Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom. We'll get that in just a minute. We'll get that one after. Let's get 2 Thessalonians 2. Verse 7. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we'll get and, that one uh, next. Verse 7. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Now, Paul said, The mystery of iniquity doth already work. What was the mystery of iniquity at that time? The Herodian dynasty. <laughs> Trying to work themselves up in there to, to get control of Jerusalem and do what they've always wanted to do. Set up their pseudo blessing. Go ahead. It says, For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So the Lord allowed these devils to do everything that they're doing. Okay, the power to do what he's doing was given unto them by the Lord. Go ahead. And he's going to do it until he's taken out of the way. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now, the beautiful thing about this wicked is when you read up in this chapter, jump to uh, verse uh Three, okay. and then read through four. Con, Second Thessalonians two and three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Seventy A.D. Esau kicked us out of Jerusalem. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, mm -hmm. who opposeth and exalted him, himself above all that is called the Most High, mm -hmm. or that is worshipped, so that he as the Most High sitteth in the temple. Of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. There you go. He would be in the temple of the Most High. Now, what is the original temple of the Most High? The Garden of Eden, which happens to be Jerusalem. So the 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 the, the man of sin that would be revealed would be in the Holy Land. In end time prophecy, he would be literally in the land, showing himself that he's the children of the Most High, boasting up himself against the Most High. All of these things lead to the people who rule now. Now, jump back to verse eight. Done. Drop it down to verse 8, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. There you go. Even him who's coming. He came to do Satan's will. That's what he came to do. And he did a good job. It's just that you're at the time of, 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 of Satan, your Satanism. Go ahead. Mm hmm it says in the middle of verse nine, even uh, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And what's that word power? I and mean, what's that word lying? Pseudos. Who rules the earth by pseudoscience? Not Japheth. <laughs> this ain't talking about Japheth. This is talking about Esau, Edom. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, and it links him to the dragon. The dragon is tied to the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. So it all makes sense when you link the Bible prophetically. Go ahead. It says in verse 9, uh, excuse me, verse 10, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, mm -hmm. that, they might be, that they might be saved, Right, and and that's what Esau would do. He would just, he would come with lies. Uh, Revelation twenty, real quick, and seven. Nah, I'm already there. This is the book of Revelation, chapter twenty, verse seven. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be let loose out of his prison, and shall go out to the Satan. Season. Now we just read that it's a particular man that's tied to Satan. Satan just means adversary. So this ain't talking about no damn red. He, he swole, he red. And he's just in a cage somewhere, and then he jumps out and put on some Converse and just goes to get out of jail. Like when Jake get out of jail, he go find his ex-girlfriend. Nah, this ain't talking about that. This is what we were talking about, the, re the Renaissance. Because for a thousand years, Esau was destitute. He was a caveman. People didn't trust him. He was looked down upon. 
all right, that was during the Byzantine Empire, but there was a point where the Lord revived Rome. He revived Esau. Go ahead. John, Revelation chapter 20, verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. See, that's what he did. That's what Esau has done with his power. He's went out through the four corners of the earth, as we read with the blessing given by Isaac, when you shall have the dominion, you will be all over the place. You will be throughout the four corners of the earth, and what he's doing is going to lead to Gog and Magog. Keep going. John, it says, Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. Right. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. There you go. So their wickedness would lead to the very point where we're at now, where Gog and Magog, which who's in that land is Russia, is leading a rebellion against the West, and the beast system is being broken up. Now, let's get that, what you had in Revelation. Unless somebody else got something. Uh, Psalm. Yep, get that Psalms, and then let's get Revelation 18, okay. and we'll get a few more. This is Psalm 137, verse 7. It says, Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Which is going into, you know, you can link this up with a lot of actual, a lot of times, but, you know, during the time of the Babylonians coming through, destroying us, Esau was right there. You know, and Esau also is looking to take us down by way of his policies and his laws now. You know, li lining up with uh, Psalm 83. Verse 8, it says, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. So Edom is tied to the daughter of Babylon. Mm -hmm. That's how they're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And this is a prophecy, too, because this didn't even, this act that he's talking about, of what they did, didn't even happen until the Babylonian captivity. Right. Keep going. Read, read 8 again. Right. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So clearly right here, Edom is linked to Esau. So anybody who says that America is Babylon, how can you then say the people who rule it are Japheth when biblically it's the Edomites that's linked to that? Now, let's get Revelation, the uh, 18th chapter, because what, what, what Babylon is, is the blessing that Isaac gave Jacob. That's really what Babylon is. What, is. what does it say in, uh? somebody get Jeremiah 51 and 7. What a blessing that Isaac gave Esau. The blessing that Isaac gave Esau. You said Jeremiah 51 and 7. He would go throughout the four corners of the earth, rule, take over, lie, steal. I got it. Go ahead. It's Jeremiah 51 and 7, all right? It reads, Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her, take balm for her pain. If so, be she may be healed. Mm -hmm. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. Mm -hmm. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the sky. Well, let's get Revelation 18. Somebody got something? Okay. You know, just a quick scripture. Uh, how you just said how America is the fulfillment of Isaac's blessing to Esau. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 20. Uh, let me get in page AV. It says, um, it says, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Woo! Which is prophecy. And when you read the last verse in, the, in Hebrews 11 and verse 40 in the NLT, it says, for the Most High had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. Mm. Talking about these times. That's right. You know, so, That's right. And that, this is the, as the, as the, uh, the con we're just going into, now this is the fulfillment, America, the fulfillment of uh, the blessing that Isaac gave Esau. That's, That's it. Right. That's it. Babylon, and it says, our sins have reached up unto the heavens. So let's go to Revelation 18. We'll get a few other points and close out. Revelation 18 started a good point, but uh, Might as well start from the top. So yeah, start from the top. <laughs> now, this is Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and of whole Shalakim. In the hold of every foul spirit and a cage and every unclean and hateful bird. And that's what's going to happen to Babylon. That's why the Lord said, I have made, uh, I, Esau said they're going to uh, raise up and rebuild, but I'm going to destroy. Mm -hmm. 
and it's going to be leave it to the dragons of the wilderness and the, all of that. That's, that's even mentioned in Isaiah 13. Babylon mm -hmm. is directly tied to the, the, the dragons. Mm -hmm. The same thing that it says in Malachi for Esau. Go ahead. Verse, uh, so like in verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with it. He transgresses by wine. His philosophy, his way, which is what? Rebellion, Satanism. The adversary, he's adverse to righteousness. And he spread that mindset throughout the whole earth, man. And look what it's led to. Look at the earth. The water's dirty. The air's dirty. Families are broken. Children are rebellious. Food is fake. Technology is taken over. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Right, because America is a consumer nation. Go ahead. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Right, and that's speaking of when we're actually delivered. All right, but, but spiritually we come out of her as well by repenting, by turning away from this world. That's how you deliver your soul. Not through getting on an airplane. Now, there are prophetically going to be a lot of nations, as we just read in Jeremiah 51, that leave this place. But the Lord never told the elect that the way that we get delivered is fleeing Babylon. It's a spiritual, it's a mindset. But we got lessons on that. Go ahead. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. Mm -hmm. Reward her even as she hath rewarded you. And double unto her according to her works. Mm -hmm. And the cup which she had filled, filled her double. Right. And wouldn't do, <laughs> go to go to Lamentations 4 one more time. Okay. <laughs> Read Lamentations 4 one more time. And then we'll jump down in Revelation. All right. I got it, bro. Come on. This is Lamentation chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 21. It says, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. The cup is going to pass through unto you. Mm -hmm. Which the cup is what? Hard times, hell, captivity. Go ahead. Right. It says, Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. Mm -hmm. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. There you go. Who knew what have us in captivity? <laughs> he would have us in captivity. Yeah. Esau. Mm -hmm. And this Babylon we're reading about is the, the final captivity of the Israelites. So by default, Esau mm -hmm. would run that. He would even be, what, the the ruler of the, the, the new uh, Egypt as well. Joel 3, go ahead. It says, excuse me, it says, uh, He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. There you go. So let's go back to, uh, to uh, Revelation 18. And then... Come. This is back in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 7. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. Right. So this chapter basically is outlining the destruction of Babylon the Great. Uh, jump to verse uh, 20. God. This is Revelation, chapter 18, verse 20. Re Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. That means that we would be captive there. <laughs> right go ahead for the most high hath avenged you on her right remember O lord the children of edom all of these things tie in to babylon go ahead verse 21 and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying thus with violence shall the great city babylon be thrown down mm -hmm. and shall be no more at all now jump to 19 so babylon has to fall Esau is the end of the world. But what's next? Jump to verse 19, uh, uh, Revelation 19. Come. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power. There you go. Unto the Lord our God. Salvation comes after Babylon falls. Mm -hmm. Salvation comes after Esau's judged. Right. It all ties hand in hand. Nowhere can we go and link Japheth to Babylon. Go ahead. Come, come. And if I may, that's, you also read it in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Mm -hmm. It says, for now is salvation come after the accuser of our brethren is cast down. There you go. So he has to be cast down first. We're waiting on Esau to take a position after all this 
shit Esau did. If we wait, if if Esau or the so-called white man is Japheth, that means that we got to wait for a whole nother nigga right. to do more than this nasty ass nigga in power right now. Right. You right. know, and the way prophecy looking, it don't seem like it's going to go that route. I don't want to do that. You know, hell no. Yeah. Man. This is back in Revelation chapter 19. So after John saw Babylon judged, now he sees this. Right. Read it again. Salvation. Revelation. Salvation. That's it. Revelation chapter 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with the fornication. Ooh, it said did corrupt the earth with fornication. And that's that same word for corruption for Esau back that he would have the dominion too. Not the same word, but... That word corrupt was in that definition for dominion. Mm -hmm. mm. Gone, gone. <laughs> and it says, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. You want me to keep going? Yeah, read that next verse. Okay, verse 3. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. There you go. That's the judgment of Babylon the Great. Now somebody get Jeremiah 49 and 17. I'm all right here. Speak Jeremiah. up. Speak up too. Jeremiah 49 and 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Edom shall be a desolation. Man. Now, what nation in the Bible was tied to being desolate? Edom. Edom. Not a guy. Babylon. Edom. Oh, Babylon. Yeah. Babylon. Edom <laughs> but Edom will be ruling that Babylon. Mm -hmm. So right here it says, Edom shall be a desolation. Go ahead. Everyone that goeth Jeremiah by it shall be astonished and shall hiss in all the plagues thereof. Right. That... Direct judgment. I guarantee you, if we look up a precept to that, somebody, who, whoever got a blue letter, just look up a precept and see if you can link that to, because uh, it said Edom. Read it again. Uh, also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. I believe Isaiah 13 says the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. You got it? Oh, no, Isaiah 13, that's Jeremiah 15 and 14. We'll get that later next. Okay. Yeah, 15 and 13. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's another one that goes right to it. Right, but uh, what does it say in Isaiah 13? It says Babylon will be desolation. There, Isaiah 13 and, well, somebody get it. Cause mm -hmm. Towards the end, right? Because if you start at 19, it says Babylon and the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees excellence shall so be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Read Jeremiah 49 uh, nine and 17 through 18. Jeremiah 49 and 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. Right. Verse 18, as in the, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah Woo! and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. The only place in the Bible that has that judgment is America, Babylon. But it ties it to Esau. Go ahead. I got it for you. Uh, Ezekiel 35, verse uh, 6 and 7. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth, passeth out and him that returneth. Mm. So it said that he would make Mount Seir most desolate. Point blank period. Couple. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Jeremiah 15 and 23. Wait, what, what scripture are you reading? Y'all 49, 17, 49. Right, right, so right. go to the next chapter. Jeremiah 15 and 23. How does the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation Woo! among the nations? But it linked it to Edom Woo. in the previous chapter. Right. <laughs> go ahead. Jeremiah 51 and 29. And the land shall tremble in sorrow for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. So, boom. Boom. Esau is tied to the same judgment as Babylon because Esau would rule Babylon. Just like Egypt had, it was a power structure, it was a rulership, but the Egyptians ruled it. It was a nation of people who ruled Egypt. The nation of people who ruled the modern day Egypt. Mm -hmm. And who was that? The Edomites. Somebody get Joel, the third chapter, the last two verses. But somebody else got something right now? Where you at? Uh, Isaiah 34. Yep. Isaiah 34, and I'm starting verse 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, 
and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Mm -hmm. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness, and the blood of the lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of the rams, for the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, and the great slaughter in the land of Idumea. Mm. Let's see, you know, we were jumping to verse 8, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. So this is future prophecy, this ain't happened yet. <laughs> Go ahead. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of the recompenses for the controversy of Zion. The Lord is pissed off at what happened to his people. Go ahead. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall be become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go forever. From generation to generation and this shall is, lie waste. This is Babylon. Let's talk about Babylon, but then it's Esau at the same time. Mm -hmm. I do me a. Japheth is at the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> Japheth ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Japheth is chilling. Drinking coconuts and shit. Right. Looking crazy. Go ahead. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Woo! But the cormorant and the bitter shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. That lines up with Isaiah 13 as well, too. Right. There you go. Those devils and inhabit the devil from Revelation 18. It's the same thing. <laughs> you see? He shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. Through. Out of there. And I'll jump down to verse 14. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, and the screech owl also shall rest there. And find herself a place of rest. So that's pretty much the point. But it yep. Revelation yep. And that links to Isaiah 13 and 21 through 22. And in verse 22, it says, In the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons shall be in their palaces. But what did it say in the book of Malachi? That's concerning Esau. Once he uh, made him, uh, once he destroyed him. Malachi 1 and 3, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. So Esau is directly tied to Babylon. It's no way around it. All right. Anybody else got anything? I Go well, right? This is off of the uh, Jewish American History Foundation. Speak up, Baba Kishan. This is off of the uh, Jewish American History Foundation article. And I thought it's interesting. It's the origin of Edom and Babylon and Rome. Mm. And it goes down to say... Um, one of the paragraphs says, the spirit of God identifies Edom with Babylon. Uh, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it, i.e. make uh, to make bare or destroy the temple, as Edom did under the Romans. Even in the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, here we see without any possibility of mistake that Edom is Babylon. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's kind of the Edom is Babylon. Yeah. Babylon, a great is the revival of Rome. Okay, and it's, the, it's, it's Egypt too, because where did the Greeks and the Romans get their gods from? Sumeria, Egypt, Canaan. You got something? Yep, uh, Khan. This is uh, Jeremiah 15 and 13. Because of the wrath of Yahweh, it shall not be inhabited. And this letter, again, this letter was written by Jeremiah to you. Because when you read in uh, chapter 51, it tells you that as a... Uh, Zedekiah went to pay tribute to uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah wrote this letter and he told Sariah, read this to the captives. As a matter of fact, let's get Jer real quick. <laughs> let's get Jeremiah 51 so brothers can know this history. And read, uh, this is dope. <laughs> read verse uh, 59. Jeremiah chapter 51. Um, Verse 59, it says, The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sarah, the son of Neriah, the son of, of Messiah, when he went to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, into Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. So Sariah was going to go with Zedekiah to pay tribute to Nebuchadnezzar. Sariah was like the uh, gift giver. He, he, he had the gifts and everything to give to uh, the king Nebuchadnezzar at this time. So Jeremiah was like, when you go there, get, read this to Jake. <laughs> go ahead. Right. And this Sariah was a quiet prince. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah wrote in a book 
all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, when thou comest to Babylon, thou shalt see and thou shalt read these words. <laughs> then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off. Now, ancient Babylon, where they were actually in captive, yeah, and when you read, it, it fell. It was a few bloodshed. You know what I'm saying? It was just a can transfer of kingdoms. It wasn't no great destruction. Edom wasn't really, it wasn't involved. It was the, the Persians and the Medes took down the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. Ac yeah, and actually Edom politically transferred into the Persian Empire yep. very well. Yeah, yep. By the time we reached the time of Purim, Esau had places all throughout the land. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they had all types of political positions, even though Esau was having back and forth out of Macedonia with Persia, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about with the wrath that came down, you see, wow, like, man, y'all some whole ass niggas, man. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. trying to get up in here. Y'all trying to get up in you know? here. It says that, it says that uh, in the editions of Esther, how Haman, the Macedonian, was seeking to try to pretty much assert, uh, pretty much assert the throne to establish the Greeks in the power to take the Persians down. Yep, mm -hmm. that was you know with that whole thing. That's right. right. Soon after the, the Greeks did take them. Yep. 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 A absolutely. So, going back here in Jeremiah fifty-one and sixty-two, just listen up, Ronald. Um. Then shalt thou say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, <laughs> neither man nor beast, but it shall it, but that it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. <laughs> and thou shalt say, uh, thus shall Babylon sink and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring up, uh, upon her and they shall be worried thus far uh, thus far are the words of Jeremiah so he wrote this letter and then said read it to them but then mm -hmm. this letter didn't have anything to do with that particular captivity it's reading we mm -hmm. it, might, it, seemed like it, kind of, it would be if you, if you think that's the same uh, captivity it would be a contradiction to what yeah. Jeremiah was telling them to do and that was to serve Babylon right mm -hmm. There you go. Right. So read what you got in 50 and then okay, yeah. we get a, we can close it out. This is Jeremiah 50. I'm actually start up at verse 11. It says, so this is a part of that letter. Go ahead. It says, because ye were glad. Uh, it says, because ye were glad. Because ye rejoice. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Yep. Go ahead. It says, O ye destroyers of mine heritage. That line is right up with Psalm 137 again. It says, ye rejoice. You see, they rejoice when we fail. Right? O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as the bulls. Right? And that could, you can line it right back up with Isaiah 34. There's a girl that could be a, a slaughter of the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. Right? It says, Your mother shall be sore confounded, going to Great Britain. Mm -hmm. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness. That's America. Mm hmm. Hinder most. Yep. It says a dry land and a desert. Hmm. Because of the wrath of Yahweh, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be established, excuse me, it shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Hmm. I'm like, right back up with Revelation 18. Are they going to hiss at her plagues? Mm -hmm. uh, 45 and 46. Mm -hmm. I want to read this real quick. When you go to uh, the Britannica.com and go to Babylon, oh, yes. go, you go down in the history, right? Just to prove we ain't just making stuff up, Ronald. It says, when the Persian Archimedean dynasty under Cyrus II attacked in 539 BCE, the capital fell almost without resistance. Um, a legend, it says, accepted by some, some as historical, that Cyrus achieved entry by diverting the Euphrates is unconfirmed in contemporary sources. Under the Persians, Babylon retained most of its institutions, became capital of the richest uh, satrapy in the uh, empire, and was, according to the 5th century BCE Greek historian Herodotus, the world's most splendid city. Do y'all understand why what he's reading? 
your brothers under he's reading this because this is how the neo Babylonian Empire yeah. fell. Right. It didn't fall by fire and just be desolate. People are still there now. All right, but that's why he's reading this. Go ahead. Boom, because mo like it was intact. It was made to be intact. Now, was there wars and fightings, and did they get taken down? Yeah, but was it this tremendous desolation that the scriptures are telling you? No. And this is why when you get into Revelation, it talks about this Babylon the Great, and that all of these things are being linked. But at the same time, you have Esau being linked to all of this. He stuff in there. He in there. Okay. Not once have we read Jaffet. Right. You know what I'm saying? But did you want to get that? Yeah. You want to, You said 45? Just a, a chapter. He was in the last two verses. The yep. Time. Jeremiah 50 and 45. And then we'll get Joel 3. And then we can pretty much anybody else and we can close it out. Jeremiah 50 and 45. Therefore hear ye the counsel of Yahweh that he have spoken against Babylon and his purposes that he have prepared propose against the land of the Chaldeans, which who were the Chaldeans, the witches and warlocks of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Mm -hmm. Now you have that same system here through the left hand uh, banking families and the witches and warlocks that rule here. It says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. And that's the small hats. When it's all said and done, the small hats are going to do something that's going to draw America to have to defend them and Russia's going to be involved and it's going to be crazy. That's what's coming. It says, uh, surely the least of the flocks shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their ha habitation desolate with them. At the noise of the taking of Babylon is the earth moved mm -hmm. and the cry is heard among the nations. Mm -hmm. Again, like the elder just read, when you, and you can get the history he read in Daniel, the fifth chapter. Yeah. Daniel, the fifth chapter just tells you your, ki your kingdom is going to be transferred to the Persians and the Medes. Mm -hmm. That ain't how ancient Babylon fell. This is speaking of a new Babylon. Now let's get Joel. Chapter 19. Chapter 3. Damn, Joel 19. I'm going to say verse 19. Because this chapter is dealing with how the Lord is going to gather the nations for war. You know, the brawl for it all, Armageddon. But how does it end? How does all of this great judgment end in Joel 3? Go ahead. This is Joel chapter 3, verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation. Because Babylon is also the modern day Egypt right. because it's a captivity for the Israelites. So Egypt shall be a desolation. Go ahead. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate <laughs> wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Mm -hmm. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. There you go. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So again, if you believe that this is Babylon, but at the same time you're saying the so-called white man who rules the Bab this Babylon is Japheth, you are confused. So hopefully y'all were edified. Anybody else got anything? Just, just if I may, yeah. when you read Revelation 19 and 10, it makes sense why it's written the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Because if you ain't going into these prophecies and such, you ain't going to have no clue what's going on. Right. And when you hear doctrines like this, what, what Ronald, uh, whatever his name is, you know, is going into it, you'll be easily persuaded if you don't have an understanding of prophecy. And that's another reason why we fail so hard as well and got into the Christian church. You ain't paying attention to those prophecies, you ain't going to know what's going on. Right. You know. right. The testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. Because we could have went into all kind of history and this and that. But really, all you have to do is follow prophecy. And clearly, this man ruling is Esau. Mm -hmm. And if he ain't, then we got to go into a whole nother captivity where Esau rules. Exactly. Because the, the end comes through his fall. So it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just add on to your point and just make me just think. So if that's the case, if, if Japheth is the so-called white man, right? And according to prophecy, Esau has to rule again. Why are you trying to flee to Africa if that's the case? Man, he in South Africa chilling with a white boy. <laughs> yep, drinking his shit, watching <laughs> soccer, <laughs> doing that, uh, dancing the ama piano. Yep, Afro beats. Afro beats. So, with that, you know, hopefully I'll edify. We'll give all praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, and And double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom. Shalom.